What's up everybody, it's your main man Pharaoh from Normalish Software, back at it again with another tutorial in the Unreal Engine C++ training series. Today, we're going to be talking about timers. Now what can you do with timers? You can do a whole bunch of stuff. You can do ability cooldowns, you can do just about anything that you'd want to be triggered by another function that would trigger another function after a certain, uh, after a certain amount of time. So let's just jump into the code, right? Here we're going to, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to end the game five seconds after the game starts. Pretty simple, pretty easy. And to do this, we're just going to go into the game mode. So I'm going to come into tutorial game mode. And I'm going to write a couple things. I'm going to add a couple functions. We're going to add begin play. And if you're unfamiliar with begin play, you can go ahead and check the tutorial in the card up here at the top right of the screen. And we're also going to add, oh, that needs to be void. That needs a return type. And then we're also going to have a void end game function. Pretty simple, pretty easy. We're going to wait for IntelliSense to... Uh, pick up the fact that we have functions here. So let's go ahead and add these functions to the .cpp file. All right, those functions have been added. Ooh, get back over there, okay. We're also gonna need a couple, uh, a couple of other things. Uh, we're going to need to include a few things. First things first is the function that you would use to end the game in most scenarios. Um, it's inside of Kismet system library. And if you're unfamiliar with Kismet, Kismet is basically where all of the stuff that you would find in blueprints are. So if, you, if you're looking for a function inside of C++ that you know is in blueprints, chances are it's in Kismet. And you can see there's a ton of different libraries for it. But for this one, we're going to use the Kismet system library. And for timers, we're also going to use timermanager.h. So now that that's in there, we can go ahead and get started. Uh, we have our begin play function here. We've got get world timer manager dot set timer. And the first perimeter that it takes in is a F timer handle. Now what this basically is, is it's just a tag, if you will, that you would use to mark this specific timer because you could have four different timers going on in the same class if you wanted to. And this is just Unreal Engine's way of uh, keeping them all together. So we're gonna have F timer handle. I'm just gonna call this game handle. So we're gonna pass in game handle. We're also going to uh, pass in this. Then what we're going to do is we're going to pass in the function that we want to have fired off after our certain allotted amount of time. So we're going to go a tutorial game mode end game, and we're going to do this right here. Th this parameter is the amount of time that you want after the timer gets fired off to uh, activate or to call this this end game function we're just going to do five seconds it takes in a float value and then the next parameter in the last parameter that we're going to use uh, as you can see there are six different uh, function overloads for set timer but for in this case what we're going to use is uh, this is going to be a boolean and i'm going to set this to false what this boolean does is it controls whether this timer will loop. So in certain cases, you'll have the timer and you'd want it to fire off again after the timer has uh, reached its maximum value. So right here, just right here, we have it set up so that it's gonna call end game after five seconds in begin play, right? So now let's do something for end game. For end game, you might wanna do do some stuff. We're not going to do a whole lot here in this function. We're just going to end up 
ending the game. So we're going to go and we're going to use this function from Kismet System Library. I'm going to go quit game. And this takes in three parameters. It takes in the world. So get world. This is the, the player controller. Since this is just a single player game and I have the default controller index to be zero. That's what we're going to pass into this function. For multiplayer games, you'd want to get the specific player controller of the player that you're ending the game for. So if the player dies or something like that. And then here, we're going to pass in an enum value, e quit preference. Quit. Now that's all fine. We're going to save that and compile. And so what should happen is we start the game, we wait five seconds, and the game will automatically exit from the editor. If it'll compile. There we go. So I'm going to hit play. Not touching anything. And the game gets shut off. So cool, that works. Uh, so I mentioned earlier that we could do some looping stuff too, and that's what we're going to do next. Uh, so right here, I'm just going to get rid of the stuff in here in the game mode because we don't need that anymore. And the compiler will yell at me if I don't use it. And we're going to come into the character because what we're going to do now is we can also use timers to turn the semi-automatic weapon that we have in the default template and we can make this full auto using timers. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here and I'm just going to add in a couple functions. I'm going to add in start fire. This function is going to fire as soon off, as soon as uh, we click the left mouse button. Stop fire will be called when we release the left mouse button. We are going to need a timer handle. Just like last time, I'm going to call this auto fire handle. And we're going to add in a variable. It's going to be a float, and it's going to be shots per second. And this will help us to control the amount of shots that we uh, output per second. Um, I made it a U property because I want to be able to make it uh, so that we can edit this value uh, very seamlessly make it quick iterations without having to recompile the code every time. So I'm going to create function definitions for start fire and stop fire. All right, now those are done and I'm going to come back up here and also include timer manager .h. And here in the constructor, we're going to set shots per second to be equal to 7 or so. Because that sounds like a reasonable value. All right. Now we're going to um, start, we're going to run our start fire function. And because all we're doing is firing the weapon, all we need to do is we're going to call on fire, which is the default function for firing the gun in Unreal Engine 4. In, or at least in this template. And then we're going to start a timer. So once again, we're going to get world timer manager and set a timer. And we called it auto fire handle. The next thing we're going to pass in is this, which is a reference to the character. And then we're going to pass in start fire because what I want to happen is after this timer reaches its full amount of time I want it to call start fire again to make sure that the gun gets fired uh, at a reasonable rate so start fire gets passed in and then for the amount of time you think we'd, we'd do shots per second but because we have it set up here if we were to just pass in shots per second we would only get a shot once per every second. So what we do is we divide one over shots per second, and then we'll actually end up getting the, uh, the appropriate amount of uh, firing for our weapon. 
And then since I do want this timer to loop consistently, I'm going to pass in true for this final Boolean. And hopefully we should get no errors. Yeah, that works. And for stop fire, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get the world timer manager again. And this time I want to clear the timer. We're doing this so that when, when we release the left mouse button, if the timer was still at a non-zero value, we'd want it to go back to a zero value just to make sure that nothing is going to happen, uh, nothing's going to go on with our timer. And since uh, we have clear timer man or clear timer, it's inputting or we're going to input our timer handle that we use for uh, the start timer fire start fire timer. So I'm going to pass in auto fire handle. And now you'd think this worked, but we did not actually change our input bindings. So right now, if we just press the left mouse button, all that's going to happen is it's going to call on fire. So I'm going to change that to start fire. And we're going to add in one more input binding. And we're going to leave this the same. We're going to change IE press to IE release. And instead of calling start fire, we're going to call stop fire. Now save everything and compile. Now what should happen is when I press and hold the left mouse button, uh, we should be getting uh, shots at, a, at approximately seven shots per second. And when I release, the, the gun will stop firing, just like you would expect in any other first person shooter. So I'm going to hit play and we have firing. And since I made that value U property, what we can do is we can go ahead and inside of content, go to blueprints, first person character, open the full blueprint, and we can easily edit this value without having to come in and recompile the C++ code every time. So I'm going to change it to 20 shots per second, because why not? Compile that. Compiling blueprints is so much faster than complying, compiling C++. I play and, oh, that's a lot faster. All right, that's, that's it for this tutorial series, or that's it for this tutorial for today. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know in the comments section down below. If you have any ideas for future tutorials, uh, let me know as well. Um, if you have any problems with this, following this, then let me know. We'll try to work it out. Um, but thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.